So let me just take you through the magic of the labyrinth with Keridwen. And I have got a few slides because I think that's really going to help me not do too much talking. You can tell my voice is a bit today that these things happen. Here we go. And what I'm going to do at the end of this too is teach you how to do a very, very simple labyrinth that you will be able to put on your altars um, or on a beach or in a book, <laughs> whatever you want. So I don't know if you've ever drawn a labyrinth before, but I'll take you through that. Okay. So Rhiannon, do I have control of these slides or are you going to flip forward? Uh, I have control of them, so just tell me when to flick and I shall do so. Thank you. That's lovely. Next slide, please, then. OK, so Caridwen works in very mysterious ways. And the first time I actually was involved with Caridwen, I was talking to a friend late at night. And you know how these things go, where you've got a really good friend and you're talking on Messenger or on the phone and the time just goes, doesn't it? And we'd been speaking about Caridwen, who I knew nothing about. And we'd been trying to organise a retreat up in Lake Bala. My friend was a huge fan of Caridwen. And she told me that the legend of Caridwen, all based around the lake. And so we got some friends together and decided, yeah, come on, let's do it. And um, we'd managed to find online a caravan, which cost the grand total of 40 Great British Pounds, which you'll know is not a lot of money for six of us. And it was a little caravan in the corner of a farm. But we thought we'll have fun with that anyway. So that night, finished talking, went to bed. And as soon as my head touched the pillow, the word labyrinth just went boom. And I thought, that's really odd. I've never really thought about labyrinths. Why on earth? I've been talking about Caridwen. Why have I got the word labyrinth? And so I couldn't sleep. I got up, went downstairs at like half one in the morning, fired up my computer and I googled Caridwen and labyrinth. Was there a connection? And this is what came up. This beautiful painting by a lady called Kate Monkman. And what blew my mind, Kate actually was from Bala. Um, I reached out to Kate after this and she met us in Bala and showed us a stone circle that nobody knows about. Anyway, that's what started my fascination with the labyrinth and with Caridwen and I started reading about it. So next slide, please, Rianne. Okay, one of the first things I did was buy this book called Exploring the Labyrinth and I heartily recommend it if you want to learn a little bit more about the, the magic of the labyrinth. The only problem was I've got a really small house. I live in a house with a postage stamp garden and there was no space anywhere to put a labyrinth. And I really wanted to walk one. You've got the book as well, Emma, I see. It's amazing, isn't it? And um, there were no labyrinths in parks near me. And I was really getting frustrated until one day the penny dropped. I've been reading this book. I've been looking at the cover for how long. I live very close to beaches. So why don't I go down to the beach and do my first labyrinth there? So next slide, Ram. This is something that the author says about the labyrinth. And I think it's a beautiful way of um, explaining it. So as she says, whoever you are, walking the labyrinth has something to offer. And if a project is challenging you, walking can get your creative juices flowing. I always think that walking a labyrinth is a bit like a walking meditation and you're actually switching off the monkey brain and just giving yourself absolute time for ideas to come up, for inspiration to come. She said, when struggling with grief or anger or a physical challenge or illness, walking the labyrinth can point the way to healing and wholeness. And you often find labyrinths now are created in the gardens of hospices. There's something very healing about walking a labyrinth. And when I had one of my latest ones, because I do them now regularly on the beach, a gentleman came over with his family. I said, would you like to walk? They can be quite healing. And he walked. And after he walked, he said to me, it's not for me, it's for her. And his wife had cancer. But I think he got a lot of healing too. If you're looking for a way to meditate or pray that engages your body as well as your soul, the labyrinth provides such a path. And the labyrinth being an ancient symbol, nobody knows where it's from. And it surpasses all religions. You don't need any religion. You can be atheist, you can believe whatever. 
and you will still get a lot out of walking the labyrinth. And the last thing she says, when you just want reflective time away from a busy life, a labyrinth can offer you time out. And sometimes when you walk a labyrinth, you get a complete bolt from the blue idea about your life, a big insight about the universe. And I've seen that happen. And other times you walk and it's just a walk with friends. But I still think it's time out for you. Next slide, please, Ran. So this was the first walk. It took me about three or four attempts to get this labyrinth right. It was on the sea. There was just myself and my daughter who took the photo. And ever since that first labyrinth, we've discovered that if we write try me, and usually with an arrow pointing, labyrinths are really popular with children on the beach too. But anyone can find it. Now, the beauty of a labyrinth on a beach is the tide takes everything out. So before setting up a labyrinth, I will always ask the spirits of place and I'll wait to be guided to find out where the labyrinth needs to be. Sometimes it's out toward the west, pointing where the ancestors are. And while you're walking, you take notice of everything. You might be into augury, so you're watching the birds and noticing what way they pass. Perhaps they're flying towards the west, towards the ancestors and taking your love, or perhaps they're coming from the west and bringing the messages from the ancestors. So take note. One of our, our girls on a labyrinth walk um, a while ago felt compelled at the end of the labyrinth walk to walk in a certain direction and she had no idea why. And when she got there, she found there was a starfish stranded and was able to put it back in the sea. A real calling for her. Next slide, Ran. And the other thing, of course, is dogs love labyrinths too. This is my daughter's two hour on that first one. Next slide, please, Rianne. Okay, so a lot of people will think of um, Theseus and the Minotaur that was trapped in the centre of the labyrinth. That's probably the most famous classical labyrinth, but it actually isn't a labyrinth at all. This is actually a maze. And the difference between the labyrinth and the maze, the labyrinth, there is one path in and one path out. With the maze, it's designed to get you completely confused and you have to figure your way out. So with the labyrinth, I've seen people who walk it and then all of a sudden they're like doubting themselves. Have they come the right way? Are they actually on their way to the middle? So with a labyrinth, it's a really good lesson in giving up control and just trusting because you can't get lost. You go straight to the centre and then you come straight back out of the centre. Next slide, please, Ran. This I love. I don't know who actually wrote this um, saying, but it's so poignant. The point of a maze is to find its centre, but the point of a labyrinth is to find your centre. And I think how true. And this was one of the labyrinths I did pointing over towards Bala. This is a beach called Red Rocks, which is ancient. You can see Hilbury Island that had a hermitage out to sea there. Labyrinths are quite useful if somebody's lost somebody recently, you can do a labyrinth in honour of that person. And you can place items in the centre to honour that person. We recently lost a priestess, Elaine, and I did one in her honour too. But every time you do a labyrinth, there'll be something different. There is no two labyrinths that are ever the same for you. And the minute you start thinking about making a labyrinth, you'll find it wants to be birthed and it will give you ideas of how to do it. And um, there's something very poignant about holding space with a labyrinth for a friend. And it's something that anybody can do. So a useful tool for you. Next slide, please, Rianne. OK, we know the labyrinth is sacred to the Celts. There are lots of different designs, too. And you will find labyrinth symbols all around the world. Next slide, please, Rianne. This again is one of the most um, famous ones. This is at Chartres Cathedral, which is over in France. And if you remember in medieval times, people used to go on pilgrimage to the Holy Land, didn't they? But there were a lot of people whose health or finances would not allow them to go to the Holy Land to visit Jerusalem. And so instead, there were cathedrals that had labyrinths and you would visit one and the other and the other and that way you would do your pilgrimage. And the last place that you would end up is Chartres Cathedral. And this was emblematic of the pinnacle, if you like, the Holy Land, Jerusalem. Walking this labyrinth would be the last 
thing that you would do. And that, in God's eyes, is supposed to be equivalent for you going on pilgrimage to the Holy Land. Now, you'll notice that Chartres Cathedral Labyrinth, it's called a Chartres Labyrinth now, this design, is very different from the labyrinth designs that we've looked at so far, which are the usual classical labyrinth design. Now, if you ever get chance, and I have got the link here, but you could Google it. It was BBC Three. There was an, an interview with um, the head of Chartres Cathedral. It's a very religious man. And his talk was actually really quite pagan. It was fab because he was explaining the labyrinth and saying how it is an emblem of your life, of your path through life um, on this earth. And when you get in the centre is when you are the closest to the divine. And it certainly feels like that when you're walking a labyrinth and you end up at the centre. That's a liminal space. That's where there is no barrier between you and the other world. So whether you're calling in goddess or God or you have no particular faith, it's just spirit or communing with loved ones. That's the bit at the centre and that's the womb of the universe, if you like. And he explained that then when you're leaving it, you're being birthed back into the earth. So what we advise a lot of people to do as they're walking the labyrinth on the way in is think about what you want to get rid of in your life. What worries you've been carrying a long, long time that you want to put down. So what's really heavy in your life that you need to get rid of? And you walk to the centre and you leave it with the divine who's bigger than you are. And then in the centre, look for some guidance. What is it that you want to bring in your life? What do you want to birth into your life? She says, having a quick slurp. To stop my voice going, that's a bit better. And then as you're walking back out of the labyrinth, you're birthing that into your life until you come back out. Sounds quite heavy, doesn't it? Sometimes you do that. As I say, sometimes you can just have a nice walk. Next slide, please, Rhiannon. So some of the oldest ones we've got are in Cornwall in the UK. Nobody knows who put them here. There are ideas that they are from medieval times. Um, other people think that some of the farmers more recently did them, but actually they've never been able to date how old they are. Next slide, please, Rianne. And we do know that the Romans used to use labyrinths for training horses. If you imagine having to turn so fast, they were also used when people were confined to small barracks because it's exercise. And a labyrinth is a huge walk in a very small amount of space. And in fact, I did actually manage to do a labyrinth in my front garden. I'd asked, been asked to do one for a moot, a pagan moot, and it was indoors. And I was trying always, because you could use labyrinths out of candles, that was a fire risk, but we could use the electric ones. We could have marked it out with a piece of rope, rope moves, trip hazard always. You could have used scarves, beautiful scarves, and let everyone put their scarf down. There's lots of options for you, but I decided to do a painted one on a cloth. And so I actually bought um, a painter's sheet. You know, you can get them from hardware store. Um, and it's probably, is it 15 by 15, something like that, foot. And it literally fit in my front garden. So I spent ages mapping out how I was going to do it and um, went out in the front garden and on hands and knees was there using little um, taster pots of paint and doing it. I've since done another, which is all different colours of paint. It's a rainbow one and it's a very simple one. Um, and I've done the full seven circuit ones, which I'll show you a little bit later as well. Donna, I could have done with you. You're an artist. You would have done this beautifully, I'm sure. Mine wasn't beautiful, but it works. It's great. Next slide, please, Rianne. OK, you don't have to be traditional. If you go on the Internet, you will find out there are lots and lots of different designs for a labyrinth. But just make sure it is always the labyrinth one way in, one way out and not a maze. Be creative. Next slide, please, Rianne. So what can you do with your labyrinths in ceremony? Well, I'm going to show you how to draw one in a minute and you could use it this afternoon. Sometimes if I'm sat in a conference like I was last week in London and ever so slightly bored, I'll get out my pen and do a labyrinth and just finger trace it. So I'm walking it with my finger. It's very calming if you're in a stressful situation. So meditation, just do one for yourself in your back garden or on a piece of paper. You can think about the purpose. If there is a particular ceremony, Beltane is coming up, isn't it? And I try and do the seasonal ceremonies on the beaches. We mark 
all the eight festivals. We raise money for charity. If it's something like Inolk, I'll um, get some seeds for people to plant and take home with them. Um, so decide what you're going to have on the centre. Are you going to have a mandala? Are people going to bring things with them to make the um, altar together? Are you going to do it yourself? Are you going to add man-made stuff? Or are you going to bring perhaps statues of Keridwen or a god? You could put your cauldron in the centre. You can put wishes in the centre. They're very creative. Before you set up your labyrinth, anyway, they'll ask permission from the spirits of place. Say a little prayer. I always ask that any energies that come through the labyrinth are absorbed by the earth or the beach or the ocean and transformed for the higher good because people are sometimes carrying very heavy stuff that they need to offload. And it's nice just to ask permission for the spirits of place and you'll get a definite yes or actually not here, move along a bit further. Are you going to do a male or female labyrinth? Did you know there were two different types? So if you're deciding on a male labyrinth, your first line, and I'll show you in a minute, will go to the left. Sorry, yeah, to the right. If it's female, it goes to the left. And are you dedicating it to a purpose? Are you dedicating it to a deity? Are you dedicating it to a loved one who's passed? And if it is a beach labyrinth, always just write permission. Try me on the outside and then people will wander along and have a little go. Next slide, please, Rianne. OK, we're going to do this in a second. How to gno. Gno isn't a spelling mistake. This is what it's called when you're actually writing um, or drawing a labyrinth. You gno a labyrinth. And you'll find, as I say, once you've got the idea of it, it has to be birthed. They um, they take on a life of their own. Next slide, please, Ram. OK, how to walk the labyrinth if you need instructions. It's quite helpful, though. Prepare. Take a deep breath, set an intention. You might want to do a grounding and centering like we did at the start of today. The walk into the centre, go at your own pace, step at a time. You don't have to walk. You could dance to the centre. You can skip, go as slow as you want. This is your time. And I always think the minute you step on the labyrinth, that's your space. So just take what you need. Your body knows what you need. It is sacred space and it's a sacred time out of space. When you get to the centre, consider what you really need consider the messages that you've got was there something when you were walking that really leapt out at you and leave any troubles with the universe and then on the way out reflect on what you've learned think about what you want to bring in and birth into your life sometimes we put oracle cards in the center and i do love a good indoor labyrinth which is lit by candle like lots of electric candles i'll give everybody one each and tell them to place their candle on the labyrinth and then everybody's energy together makes the most magical container. And once we finish, everybody picks up that little electric candle to take home with them. If there isn't a fire risk or you're outside, you could use lanterns. Really think, get creative. And do thank the labyrinth and the divine and the spirits of place afterwards for having put up with you there. Next space, please, Ram. Next slide, I should say. For anybody who's really desperately wanting to know more about labyrinths, and be careful, you will go down a rabbit hole and you can learn more and more and more and more about them. There are some fabulous uh, websites. These are just two. Veriditas um, is a bit of a charity that sets up labyrinths around the world in places like hospices too. And it's just veriditas.org. Um, there's also a labyrinth society. So just labyrinthsociety.org or just Google. So I'll finish sharing the screen now and let me show you how you can make your own labyrinth. Are you all excited? Here we go. We're going to get a cup of coffee after this at quarter two or just before quarter two. So hang on in there, guys. Okay, right. Let me stop my background because then you will be able to see me a bit better. Um, choose virtual background, none. Okay. And you can see, look, Lillian Evie, stars here. Granddaughters are staying in this room at the moment, which is why it's um, got lots of stars everywhere. OK, righty-ho. So you need a piece of paper. Have you got a piece of paper and a, ha a pen somewhere or a pencil? This has been recorded, though, so if you want to come back to it. Woo! Good work, guys. OK, the first thing you are going to do. I wonder if I've got a thicker pen. I'm going to try this one. Okay. 
If not, I'll show you. Right, the first thing we are going to do is head toward the bottom of the sheet because labyrinths take a lot of space. And you're just going to draw across. We can all do that, even me who is not at artistic at all, okay? I'm gonna show you a really simple labyrinth first. And then once you have got your cross, you're literally gonna do a dot in each of the corners. Okay, so far so good, right. And now what we're gonna do is, let me just see if we can do this here, all right. You're gonna start always at the center, at the top of your cross. And whichever direction you're gonna go, you're always gonna go that direction. So at the top, we're going from the top of the cross to the first dot. Yeah, so you've made it like a little hook. Okay. So because we went in this direction, we're always going to go in this direction, okay? So we're going to go to the next thing here, which is the dot. And we're going to go around and join it up with the end of the cross. Okay, I'll give you a second to do that. Wonderful. Now, what we're going to do now is go to the other side of the cross. And we're going to extend that all the way around to the dot. OK, so you're going on the outside. Hopefully all with me so far. All right. And then the last thing we're going to do is go to this dot now that's left on this side. We're going to go all the way on the outside and join it up with the bottom of the cross. And you've made your own very first labyrinth. Yeah, this is the most simple one to do. This is a beautiful one to do takes not a lot of time and it will fit on a decorator sheet if you want to take a sheet labyrinth or if you want to pop it in your garden made of flowers or rocks or if you want to do it on your um beach okay does everybody cope all right with that yeah good shall i show you the more complicated one let's do it if you get lost you can come back on the the video all right we're just gonna Hi, B. We're going to take the same sort of um, idea. So, B, we're going to join at 11 o'clock. So, I'm glad she can, um, she's tested the link for us. And we're going to have a cup of coffee and be back at 5 2. But before we do, let's just talk you through this labyrinth. So, again, towards the bottom of your sheet, you want to make the cross. Make it a little bit smaller, though, OK? We've got a lot to fit in on this sheet of paper, OK? All right, now instead of the dots, what I want you to do is put a right angle in each of the four corners, yeah? Okay. I'll give you a minute to do that. So we've got the cross and we've got a right angle in each corner. And now we're just gonna put those dots in again, like we did last time. Okay. This is your pattern. This is your pattern for your labyrinth, okay? Right, everybody done that. So you all know the principles that whichever way we go, we will always go that way. This time we're gonna go in the opposite direction. Then you'll have done a male and a female labyrinth, okay? Right, so at the top, we're gonna to start again at the top of the cross and we're gonna join it up to the first thing that's free, which is the top of the right angle. Okay, so we've gone top of cross over to the right angle, okay? Then coming back to this side of the paper, we're gonna to go to the next thing that's free, which is the top of this right angle, and we're gonna join it to the dot on the other side. So, okay. Great. Again, back to this side of the paper. And the next thing that we have free, you'll see is the dot, and we're just gonna join this dot up to the other bit of that right angle. So, if you're getting lost, please do not panic. Mine's a very wobbly labyrinth now because I'm drawing it upside down. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is this right angle here and we're going to join it to the end of the cross. Is it starting to look a little bit like a labyrinth? You should be dead proud of yourself if so. Some people take years to learn how to do this. Okay. Now we're gonna come across the other end, the tail of this cross here. We're gonna go all the way round and join it to the top of the um, right angle. Okay. 
Can you see how it's getting big now? These are fun when you do this on the beach. <laughs> right. Back to this side of the paper now. And we're going to take this little tail here and all the way around, we're going to join it with the dot on the other side. If you didn't do a very little cross now, you're probably running out of paper going, oh my gosh. Okay. Nearly there, guys. Nearly there. Right. We're going to take this little dot now and go all the way along and join it to the bottom of this right angle. And I am just about the edges of my paper here. Okay. You see how that's joined up. And then the last two things left, you can see we've got this tail here of the right angle and we've got the center of the labyrinth cross coming down. So we're just going to join those two up. As I say, if you've lost it, don't panic because you can look on the recording. And that is how you can know a seven circuit labyrinth. Have a go, have a play. They are amazing to be able to do and you can use it in all of the ways that we've just said. Okay, how did anybody get on with that? Yeah, all completely lost or did you get on all right? Oh my gosh, Sadie, well done. That's so cool. Love it. Okay. Righty-ho, let me just put my background back on. Boom, 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 boom. And the background we've got here is Bala Lake, if anybody's wondering, which is the um, legendary home of Kerry Dwin. <laughs>